there's a way to make an entrance. <laughs> My destiny. It was now a conspiracy of witches. Download Veely today. When you think of Australia, what comes to mind? White sand, surf, and crystal clear waters? Yep, it has that. But like most places on Earth, if you travel the back roads, you see something else. That is impressive. That's like out of Indiana Jones right there, man. You see a side of the country that isn't putting on a show. It isn't trying. It just does what it does. This part of Australia doesn't see many international tourists. And because of that, a journey here means you'll have a travel experience that's about as honest as it gets. I've never seen anything like this that's just off the side of the road randomly. When you travel, the world becomes a smaller place. When you explore with friends that share a love of photography, destinations come to life. This water is emerald green. We tell the stories of travel with our cameras, capturing some of the most beautiful locations on Earth. But every adventure reveals more than what's in the frame. Thunder Boomer, as we see him popping up right now. The people, the food, and unexpected turns in the journey. Now they're gonna swim right with us. <laughs> brings the full experience of travel into focus. place that's always captured my imagination. Getting to Australia is something I've always dreaded. The idea of a 15-hour plane ride over nothing but water most likely had something to do with me putting off coming here for so long, but the flight to LA to Sydney was surprisingly not that bad. For this adventure, I'm joined by two friends who happen to be two very talented landscape cinematographers, John Neely and David Boomer and each has a unique way of seeing the world through their lenses. The goal with any place we visit is for each of us to tell the story of a destination with our cameras. Photography is the most prolific way we all communicate our experiences of travel with each other. Whether you're a serious hobbyist or a tourist with a smartphone, we share our journeys with the world through pictures we tell a story one frame or video clip at a time. Like we often do, we decided to explore a section of Australia that international tourists rarely see, a part of the country that people from places like Sydney and Melbourne come when they want to escape the pace of big city life. So our plan is to drive a scenic route called the Princess Highway along the southeastern coast of Australia, passing through small coastal towns and wild rainforests along the way. Places like the quiet village of Inverloch. All right, well, we've made it to Inverloch. Basically drove a little bit until it looked pretty, and we said, let's start uh, filming here. So far, this reminds me a lot of actually North Carolina. It reminds me a lot of the Outer Banks. Uh, today, it's a little overcast. We have this marine layer right here, but we're not gonna let that, you know, pull away from the beauty of this place. Inverloch is a small coastal town with a handful of restaurants, vacation rentals, and boutique hotels. We got into town the night before about eight o'clock and this place was entirely shut down. But the hazy morning sun cast soft light on the charm of this place and some friendly locals suggested we take a drive up the coast to Cape Patterson. It didn't take long for us to see why. pulled over right now along the uh, this 13 kilometer drive everybody talks about out to Cape Patterson. Yeah, I mean, right now there's a little bit of a squall line coming in, but it's we're elevated, it's beautiful, the water's super turquoise, so I think I'm gonna put the drone up right now, try to show off a little bit of what this section of the coastline looks like. We're going to take a quick little flight and see if this will work. Can the drone take any kind of water? Yeah, it can take a little bit. I can take. I don't typically like to get my stuff wet, um, especially electronics that are airborne. I try to stay away from wet, airborne electronics. Fire it up. It's kind of 
creep it really slow. And then I'll just do like a little tilt down as we go over the cliff here with the gimbal. What the, the thing I love about drone is that, you know, it gives us an opportunity to just show that big master wide shot of a place where you really get the sense of the entirety of the landscape. And then you complement that with really great detail shots of, um, you know, from your big cameras. And then you got a nice, story to tell. Surrounded by rolling hills, eucalyptus trees, and cattle ranches, the rugged coastline here is the perfect backdrop for any photographer, and a place where the unique wildlife of Australia can pop up at any time. He's just going to town on bugs. I want to be able to move in case this thing comes after me. After originally thinking this was some kind of porcupine that, at any moment, would rear back on its hind legs, do an ab crunch, and shoot giant quills into John's kneecaps, a passerby informed us that this, in fact, was a special little creature called an echidna. The echidna is closely related to the platypus, of all things, and uses its elongated nose and sticky tongue to eat ants and other bugs from underground. Oh my god, he is just going to town on ants. He's just covered in them. Oh, that's rad. He's chowing down on ants. Okay, he's coming towards me now. Road trips are a great way to cover a lot of ground when trying to capture the different faces of a place as big as Southern Australia. The road less traveled takes you through the landscapes that are free of the kinds of commercialism that's directed at high volumes of tourists and gives you this simple, clean, authentic setting that provide the perfect frame. After driving about two hours east of Inverloch, we hit our next stop along the coast, a national park that is about as down under as you can get in Australia, a place called Wilson's Promontory on a peninsula that is the southernmost tip of Australia's mainland. So we're from Melbourne. <laughs> You're from Melbourne now. Do you guys come here often? Yes, we, think we, we have. We have very been. small. And what do you love about this place? Oh, um, the natural every beauty. Every little the sea, the rocks. Bit of it. Every Meeting grain you of guys. sand, every rock, every tree. <laughs> it's but just special. It's completely special here. Completely just the brown snakes. That's, That's the only nature. thing we don't like about down here. And well, we just saw a wallaby with this little baby in a park. Yeah, little Joey. And popping it's up to us. It was beautiful. <laughs> That's and the wallabies, the wildlife down here. And the fact that there's nothing else done here, you can only camp here. Wilson's Promontory is much like a national park in America, but this place is no frills. There's not much in the way of interp signs and rangers standing around to point you in the direction of the next attraction. It's raw, wild Australia, where jungle meets the sea. With the day getting short and a long drive still ahead of us, it's time to get back on the Princess Highway to head north. This part of the drive leads inland, away from the coast, and into a rural agricultural belt with sprawling ranch land on either side of the road. What are we trying to do here? Well, we're, we're going to try it with the sun setting. We got this crazy light. This is a cemetery road. We're gonna turn in here and just try to get some sunset shots. It's really pretty right now. Make a U-turn if possible. Okay. Yeah. Any trains coming? Mm, no. Not this way. Okay. I wonder if we just pull over right here and shoot. Huh? Is there any private property sign? Well, we're on a road. We're okay. Let's just get out and do this. Sunset frames a memorable scene of the farmlands here. A small dairy on a quiet back road in late summer. 
a side of Australia you don't normally think of when planning a vacation here, but Australia still the same. Another thing you might miss if you don't explore the back roads is a chance to meet a guy like this. A sweatsuit wearing outback dairyman on a mission to wrangle some stray cows. We just stopped to shoot some video um, of the sunset and then this, this Australian rancher guy starts yelling at us. He wants me to jump over the fence and scare these three cows I'm trying. I'm trying. <laughs> he's yelling at me now. Uh, uh, he was, he was, yeah, he's he's really not happy with me right now. I don't want to let him down. I don't want to let him down. Hang on. Oh, there we go. That looks okay. Let's that, get that. I don't know exactly. No, you're not gonna fit through that. Dimensionally there was impossible. A, there was a day when that could have happened. Could have, but yeah, a day has come and gone. Right now. He's quick with some colorful language as part of his request and does it with a weird smile on his face, like somehow he already knows us. What's your name? Uh, what do you mean, yours? Jeff Aiello. Get over. But the tight span on that barbed wire fence and concern for this part of the country you being well known fence. for its brown snake population, then, not to mention this guy's obvious early start to happy hour, <laughs> leads us to a decision we'll chalk up as a good one as our friend stumbles into the middle distance and we say goodbye. Our desires to want to go chat with that guy, it's probably best that we move on. He's, um, he's been drinking and he's, he actually had a cut on his face. I don't, I don't know if you guys saw that or not, but he had a little, he went down. He, he, he took a header in his pasture. So he's uh, out there right now her, herding his cattle, waiting for us. He's probably doesn't get many visitors, but uh, we've got, it's getting dark. We still have an hour to go, so. <laughs> It just shows to show you, man, you never know what's going to happen out here, but we had a fun time with him. Something I love about exploring off the beaten path is the relaxed vibe of being in a place without the buzz of tourism. There's no veneer of expectation. The towns are where the locals come. The food is what the people who live here eat. There's just something more real about it all. In this part of southeastern Australia, the vast pasture lands give way to an expansive rainforest that seems endless. It's hard to travel even a few miles without stopping to get out and point the cameras at something new. Hold on. That is a beast. The ants here, he's Look actually taking a defensive posture. He's like, I see you. I'm he's, not take, he's not taking his eyes off. No, nope. his head's on a swivel. The Princess Highway takes us into the heart of the Mackenzie River rainforest, where eucalyptus trees, ferns, and dense undergrowth stretch for miles. It's here that a small roadside sign urges us to pull over and explore something we missed on our trip planning. The Mackenzie River Rainforest Walk is only a one kilometer loop hike, but it gives access to the impenetrable jungle here in a way that only a well-established trail can. There's webs along through every single- Well, they're just little webs. Yeah, yeah. Just... They're good. Just walk with your camera out in front of you and that'll help knock them down as we go. Just in my face, yeah. This forest is so dense and filled with stuff that will kill you if you can't see where you're walking that it's really tough to get a sense of the scale and beauty of these old growth rainforests unless you're immersed in them. This hike is definitely one of those little gems you might not see coming. It's a reminder that taking a break from the drive to stretch the legs might just lead to one of the best memories of a trip.
push to the north continues as we pass through small towns and coastal getaways throughout the day. As we drive on a backcountry road near the town of Eden, we finally spot a small troop of kangaroos and pull over to get a closer look. Later in the day, it's not uncommon to spot small groups of roos hanging back away from the roads. It's estimated that there are somewhere between 20 and 30 million kangaroos in Australia. So spotting some on a trip here is a pretty good bet. Our drive emerges back out of the forest and into the seaside town of Tathra, a small fishing village known for its famously delicious oysters farmed in the clear waters of the bay. We find a good spot to pull over and capture some shots of this seaside community next to the Tasman Sea. Our cameras sparked the curiosity of a passing local who, like most of the folks we met in Australia, stops by for a friendly little chat. To me, this place is going back in time. You can leave your house unlocked, you can leave your car unlocked. Well, I've got an oyster farm out uh, Wappingo, which is just north of here. And um, I sell oysters everywhere, Sydney, Canberra, Brisbane, Melbourne. Um, they love Wappingo oysters because it's in the middle of a national park. There's no residential areas around, or, you know, so there's no contamination. When I retired, got me money, I come down one weekend and I said to one of my mates now, I said, I wouldn't mind getting a business down here. He said, got just the one for you. So I came down, had a talk to the bloke, went home back to Wagga with no money in my bank. Mrs. wasn't real happy, but I spent it all on an oyster farm. <laughs> Sometimes when you travel to tourism hotspots, the locals' level of kindness can be a little forced. But here in Australia, especially in this part of the country, it's usually nothing but a kind word and a good suggestion about what we should see next. Brian pointed us to a seafood eatery just up the road that sells his oysters, and he was adamant that we stop and sample them. After a short drive north, we find the little seafood restaurant Brian described and gave his oysters a shot. I think last time I ate oysters with you, I got really violently sick. <laughs> That's probably not a good thing to lead off no. with. Yeah, they're good. I've never done it without red sauce, though. Ooh, you get a lot more taste. <laughs> All right, I'm going in. Little Brian, and we met the guy who grows these. Yeah, things. how cool is that? Dave Boomer is our control in this because if uh, Jeff and I get deathly sick, um, and Dave doesn't, we know exactly what got us. I'm sick. telling you, man, they're very good. Those are buttery and, are and sweet. If you like raw oysters, if you like raw oysters, they came. That's your jam. And we, we, I mean, I'm loving this. And Daddy likes. Mm. Oh, that's us. All right, our food's ready. It gives me a chance to eat the rest of these while he's getting the food. <laughs> Shooting in low light has always been something I love really fast lens that can practically see in the dark, matched with the new low light capabilities of today's cameras, mean you can clearly capture images in that time after the sun sets, when colors are muted and soft, just before the darkness takes full control and the creatures of the night come out. What is it? The biggest bats I've ever seen in my life. Look at them, Dave. Look at these bats. That's like out of Indiana Jones right there, man. Those are huge bats. They are huge. <laughs> that is impressive, man. Look, they're giant. Yeah, they're the size of a big bird. They're like, a, they're like the, the size of like a small falcon. <laughs> yeah.
Of all the towns one can discover on this drive, the last coastal village we stayed in was by far our favorite. A picture-perfect place in the Australian state of New South Wales called Naruma. derived from the aboriginal word meaning clear blue water. After a good look from above, I'd say they nailed the name. And this waterway here, why it's so clear and, and, and pristine, it's there's no river flows in it, it's actually a bay. So it flushes every day with the salt water and everyone can't work out why this is so clean. There's actually no muddy rivers flowing into it. If you go to all the other bays along here, they're all muddy because of the bay and the oysters that grow up here are the best oysters in Australia because they're flush with fresh, clean water. It's only a two hour drive south of Sydney and while most people visiting Australia go north to see the sights, Naruma might be a better bet if great food, welcoming people and stunning ocean views are your thing. sounds of waves rolling in from the Tasman Sea, the almost unbelievably clear waters of the bay, and the abundant wildlife combine for a destination that paints an unforgettable frame beyond the lens. me a lot of California. Again, it, it's amazing the similarities, but the biggest difference is the lack of people. We're on a point break right here with uh, two surfers and they have the whole beach to themselves and great waves. They're just, every five minutes they're catching a great wave and they're riding it. I feel almost guilty filming and showing off this place because I don't want to spoil it for other, for, for forever. If you come here, respect it and keep it like this uh, because this is a truly special place for sure. And the people here know it too. The full experience of travel, especially to a place far away like Australia can be hard. But what you bring back home is always worth it. You forget the long hours in the plane driving back roads during thunderstorms, repacking the rental car for the 12th time, and scarfing down food on the go. The images you capture on the adventure bring it all back to life and allow you to share that experience with the people you care about. It's why we do what we do to inspire people to venture out, to see the world and visit places that just might leave the right kind of mark on your soul. Places like Southeastern Australia. Places like this.